Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Transformers and we are entering a new volume. And this one, we go into the past. So this picks up on the current events, well, sort of. And the reason why I say that is because the way this issue is showed, we go into the past and we also go into the past of when Soundwave took command, which was back in issue 7. But we see all that again of Soundwave destroying Starscream and tell him that he kicked his Ravage and that the only path left is extermination. And we see Starscream fall off the cliff like we did in issue 7, but of course with a different perspective. And a new lick of paint, which I gotta say I really do like Jason Howard's art style here, but we see Starscream laying here basically bleeding out and we hear him say Starscream is his name. And we instantly shift back into Cybertron, which we see someone calling him out by the name of Ulchtar or Ilchtar. Probably gonna butcher that a couple times, but yeah, we are back on Cybertron though, and the art here looks amazing, man. But we see Starscream and Jetfire, and I also believe Skybound's first ever new character for the Transformers series, and his name is Genvo, which is really dope. And we see that Genvo, Ulchtar, aka Starscream, and Jetfire are going off together for a kind of a last oorah as friends, because this is Jetfire's last night on Cybertron, so they want to go off with a bang, which is really wholesome. And we see them go on their way to Moonbase 2 because it will have the best viewing of what they are going to go do. And it's really cool to see Moonbase 2 here, but we see on the next page here that they are talking about the war. Now, real quick, if anyone doesn't know, and I'm pulling this from the G1 cartoon because that's what the story seems to be heavily based on, but back then, before the war on Cybertron was ramping up, Starstream and Jetfire were scientists and weren't really fighters, and that's exactly the case here as we see Starscream say that he hasn't really heard much about the fighting, and that him and his brothers are refusing to join a side. And we see Genvo offer Jetfire and Starscream to go join the Decepticons, as the leader of the Decepticons is unlike anyone who has met him, and that they would make an incredible team together. But we see Jetfire basically say that he's already made a choice, which is to explore out in space and find a way to save Cybertron. And this right here gives you guys a good estimate of how long Jetfire has been gone, because right here, the war is kind of just starting, and he goes off and leaves and then crashes on the rock, which then starts Void Rivals, which then we see him come back on Transformers issue 1. So, he's been gone for a while, <laughs> and the poor dude doesn't know what happens with the war. But we see this interesting part of the page as Genvo starts to stomp down on these little robotic insects, and we see Starscream grab his arm before stomping any more and tells him to stop, and that everyone thinks they bite, but they are actually quite harmless as they help clean the gears of our moons, and goes on to say they are beautiful. And it's kind of weird, man, seeing Starscream act peaceful. <laughs> but we see Genvo and Starscream point as they say they are here, which then we see Omega Supreme. At least that's who I think it is, and the reason why I say that is because Omega had a different color scheme to other Guardian robots back in the G1 cartoon. So for all we know, this could be someone else, but I'm just gonna say it's Omega Supreme. But we see Omega Supreme fly around, you know, the Moon Base 2 and Cybertron, and we see Starscream and the other two marvel at how big the Guardian robots are, which then we see Starscream come up with a plan to get a better look. And I love this next page here because we see Starscream run through this sign and we see Cup asleep at the job as like a parking attendant for like the munitions area. And you just see him wake up like, what, what, what? what's going on? <laughs> it's amazing. It's definitely a homage to the 86 movie when we see like Hot Rod run through the sign and, you know, Cup being Cup. But we see Starscream tell Jetfire and Genvo that the Cybertron defense or stock about ammunition is here, and wow, what a mouthful, but we see Starstream has a plan to make the Guardian robot see them, and what other better way to catch the eyes of a Guardian robot the size of a planet? Why not commit arson? <laughs> As with a big explosion Starstream makes, it catches the eyes of Omega Supreme, and they all wave at him, and Omega Supreme waves back. Honestly, very, very wholesome to see, but as they are celebrating, the old timer himself, Cup, catches up to the three troublemakers, but here's the thing, the three of them can fly, and Cup can't. So they all laugh and fly away, which then we see Cup being Cup, call them dumb techno pups, which is very spot on for the character. <laughs> but we see the next page that it's time to say their final goodbyes, as Jeffire can't stay another night, and must find a way to prevent Cybertron's demise. And with a final group hug, Jeffire goes off into space, saying goodbye. But as Starstream says he's going to miss him, Genvo tells Starstream that he has not to worry, as he still has him. And we see on the next page, as time has gone by, and loud explosions go off everywhere as we see Shockwave, Genvo, and freaking Overcharge, which is amazing, man! But we see Starscream come out of this building in a panic as he sees his friend waging in a war, and with a huge blast coming through, it hits Starscream, knocking him back as Genvo stops shooting the go and helps Starscream and help him get up. We see Starscream witness that 
what war can do and more specifically what war can do when it's in your own backyard as starscream's laboratory gets completely destroyed all of his work as a scientist gets destroyed and we see genvo helping starscream evacuate the area saying that they came out of nowhere and they're the right on our tails which then we see in the next page our boy genvo gets shot right in the chest leaving a hole in his body we see genvo bleeding out in starscream's arms telling his old friend ulchtar that he did it that he yelled at the gods and that you screamed the stars into seeing us and with a smile on his face genvo goes offline for good as old star screams for genvo's name we see him look to his side and it's optimus prime who shows up on the scene the heroic leader i say with a question mark because in starstream's eyes optimus is no hero as look what war has caused in his own home also what's really cool here is we see bumblebee in the back and i also believe that's grimlock which is awesome at least that's what i'm rolling with it kind of looks like grimlock so but it's cool to see their cybertronian designs and shifting back into the present, Starstream going into complete shock, meeting his end, screams out for Genvo, but nothing's there. As all that's there is lava, and as Starstream is no longer on Cybertron, he's on Earth, and everything he just witnessed again was all but a terrible memory in the past, back before the war, waged on into what it is now. And we see Starstream kind of like get knocked out here. I don't want to say he's fully dead here because it's Starstream, man. Like this dude, like you'd, you'd have to like destroy like every atom in his body for him to be really dead. Like this dude always finds a way to come back to life. But we see a group of people here saying quickly now and someone asking, what is this thing? And then the person responds with something big, which then we see in the next page. I think these are Cobra dudes because, and I asked this question to anyone in the comments because I haven't really read any of the G.I. Joe sided things for Skybound, but isn't that a his tank? Like, I don't know. It looks like a his tank, so I, I really don't know. <laughs> it could be Jai Joe's or Cobra. I don't know. But I'm just going to say Cobra. It's a group of Cobra guys. But <laughs> So forgive me if I get this wrong. But we see them trying to tow Starstream away. And we see this part where this guy is sketching Starstream's face on a notepad. Which then we see him being told to get his head in the game. And are trying to load Starstream up on the tank. Which we see he's just too heavy. Even with him missing his limbs, he's just too heavy for the tank to tow which then we see Starscream drop back on the floor. And we see this guy kind of have a meltdown here, basically saying, my father was a legend and was celebrated for even in death. And what do I get? A unit that can't even get this thing to be salvaged. And we see him say this is an embarrassment and that he should be at the top and all that changes now. And this whole scene really draws parallels to how Starscream is and how he acts and how he's always wanted to take leadership. But we shift back to the moment when Genvo died. And we see Starstream carry him which then he trips and drops Genvo's corpse. Which then we see Ulchtar ask himself, What am I going to do now? Which then we see the big baddie himself, Megatron, walk in, telling him you can join us, you can avenge your friend and your clan, and that you can be the warrior of the Decepticon Order. Which then we see Megatron transform into a gun. And also here, his gun mode looks a lot like a tank, so I wonder... If this makes Megatron a triple changer or not, but anyways, anyways, we see Megatron ask him, Tell me, young one, what did your brothers call you? And we see Ulchtar say, My name is Starscream. And his eyes turn red, and he is now a Decepticon. And that's how this issue ends. And let me tell you, fellas, I really, really enjoyed this issue because it was a nice change of pace and seeing what Cybertron was like when the war first started and giving Starscream an origin story because I feel like for the longest time Starscream's origins was always kind of like shaky you know one a lot of like the video games for example like the Cybertron games you know he was a scientist and then you know he joins the Decepticons G1 side of things same thing and then other ones it's just you know he was always kind of there with Megatron's uprising and all that I mean I know with like Transformers 1 his origins is a little bit different which I won't say because I don't want to spoil it because people and freaking the UK haven't even seen it yet. Come on, Paramount. Come on. <laughs> but it's really cool to see how Starstream gets his name and why he joins the Decepticons. Which again is really cool because I don't think we've ever really had a full-on explanation before when it comes to Starstream's name. I mean, I feel like for the longest time he was just always called Starstream. So it's really cool here that he actually had a different name and that the whole reason why he got his name was because Genvo told him when he was bleeding out from the war. I don't know, it's just really cool to me. This issue also shows that basically anyone in any side in this war, the reasons why they joined can be all over the place. The reason why Starstream joined was, well, for one, Genvo was a Decepticon, offered Starstream and Jetfire to join, 
but also too Megatron was there to pick up Starscream and give Starscream a purpose again. I mean if you were to put Optimus there could Optimus have swayed Starscream the same way? Maybe but it kind of just shows why everyone had a purpose onto why they were joining the war and it's cool that they're doing it with Starscream here. All this was really dope. I am also really digging Jason Howard's art style here for this issue and I believe the next issue will be another flashback issue which I believe Jason Howard will be doing and then after that Corona will take over and then we will pick up on the events of the finale of issue 12 with issue 15. But I would love to know your guys' thoughts on this issue. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys enjoyed it or if you guys didn't. But I will see you guys in the next video later.